the top six trade destinations for Anthony Davis. Now, before I start with the video, I just want to thank you guys so much for all the support. You guys have made coming back to YouTube so easy, and I really just want to say a massive thanks. It really does mean a lot to me. So yeah, just huge thank you guys, and let's get on with the video. As we all know, Anthony Davis is heading out of New Orleans. What we don't know is exactly when that will be and who that will be to. I believe that in respect of Anthony Davis, a trade will be made at the end of this season and before next season. I think he'll either be dealt on draft night or right afterwards, but I think no matter what, he will not be kept on that team during next season. I mean, he's barely playing a whole game this season. So surely out of what he's done for the Pelicans, they'll have some respect and trade him before the next season commences. A few things before I start with the video. If you guys enjoy these types of videos, please be sure to subscribe for more. Leave a like if you guys want to support me and the channel. And I do hope you guys enjoy the video. Remember, when talking about trade possibilities for Anthony Davis, you don't discuss what Davis wants because he really doesn't have a say in who he'll be traded to. It always is what is best for the team, and in this case, it's the Pelicans. And to be honest with you, they have some pretty good options that they can use to trade Anthony Davis away. So at number one, the Portland Trailblazers. This is a different one, but just hear me out. The Blazers are in the West, a stat conference, and if the success isn't there, making the playoffs every year isn't good enough if you're not going to win, because let's be honest, we play in the NBA to win championships. We know that Dame wants to stay loyal and be a Blazer for life, but in my honest opinion, depending on how the Blazers go this year in the playoffs, they might just have to pull the plug. McCollum and Dame are great, but they aren't enough. The Pelicans will no doubt ask for Damian Lillard who will play alongside Drew Holiday, and that would make for a very exciting backcourt. But it does seem unlikely that Portland will part ways with Lillard, given the level of risk associated with Anthony Davis leaving. And CJ McCollum is not a bad player in his own right. So in my opinion, I think a deal of CJ paired with Jake Lehman and Zach Collins, who was a 10th pick and a player who has shown flashes this season, as well as a first round pick, probably the 2021st or 2022nd pick, is likely to be the best offer Portland will be able to stomach. Probably not as good in terms of rebuilding for the Pelicans, but at least it's something. This would be huge for the Blazers though, and Anthony Davis and Damian Lillard combination would be extremely exciting to watch. But as for the Pelicans, they'd have a lineup of Drew Holiday, CJ McCollum, Jake Lehman, Julius Randle, and Zach Collins, which isn't all that bad in my opinion. Number two, the Los Angeles Clippers. Could Anthony Davis somehow end up playing in the Staples Center but not be in a purple and gold uniform? Well, it's not likely, but at the same time, it is certainly possible. Now, would Davis want to play for the Clippers over the Lakers? Probably not, but it's not his option. It's what the Pelicans want. And to be honest, the Clippers are expected to have one of the biggest players in free agency this summer. And while they don't have a rich history of landing a big free agent like the Lakers, Celtics, Heat or Bulls, they do have some enticing assets. They actually do have a guy named Jerry West. Jerry West, I've made videos on him before. I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to watch my video on the Clippers from the start of this year. But that man knows what he's doing. And if they could also get a player like Anthony Davis on the squad, it's going to be exciting. But what would the Pelicans get? Of course, the Clippers already traded away Tobias Harris, who would have been a great asset. And he's in the midst of a career year. But they still gained two first round picks from him which are the Philadelphia's 2020 first round pick and unprotected first round pick from the Miami Heat as well from 2021. And these picks are exciting for the Pelicans, along with the possibility of more future picks, as well as a rookie point guard, Shea Gilgis Alexander, who in my opinion has the potential to be a star. He's six foot six, a point guard, great handles, good passing. He's lanky, tall, potential, it's there. The Clippers can also throw in some other players, Danilo Gallinari, Zubak, another first round pick. So it's worth a try if you're the Clippers. With another chance of getting a play in free agency, maybe Kawhi Lennon and Anthony Davis, that would be scary if you're the Clippers. But as for the Pelicans, you've got a lineup of Drew Holiday, Shea Gilgis Alexander, who can't play the two at 6'6", or you just move Drew Holiday to the two, Danilo Gallinari, Julius Randle, and Zubak with some nice draft picks off the bench. That's not bad. Number three, the New York Knicks. Rich Paul has told ESPN that Davis wants to be traded to a team that allows him the chance to win consistently and competes for a championship. 
While the Knicks don't exactly fit that right now, it's almost certain that the Knicks are destined to have a big free agency and get something when it comes to landing a big name player. ESPN has already reported that the Knicks are going to be aggressive in their pursuit of Anthony Davis. With a high lottery pick this summer and a few other young and talented pieces on the roster, the Knicks have a lot that they can offer. The Knicks have two max spots in free agency will be cut down to one if they can get Anthony Davis. So imagine, maybe Kevin Durant, Clay Thompson, Kyrie Irving, Jimmy Butler, Kemba Walker to pair up with Anthony Davis. And if I'm the Pelicans, RJ Barrett, Cam Reddish, Jai Morant, they all sound very enticing. Pairing that up with Julius Randle, and if you can also add in a player like Kevin Knox, Dennis Smith, or possibly both, the Pelicans team is looking nice. Pelicans lineup would look like Drew Holiday at the one, RJ Barrett at the two if they decide to draft him, Kevin Knox, Julius Randle, Jalil Okafor with Dennis Smith coming off the bench, or maybe you even trade Drew Holiday away, going even younger and getting a better center whilst you keep Dennis Smith Jr. That is an option for the New York Knicks and the New Orleans Pelicans. Number four, the Denver Nuggets. I'm not sure if you were expecting this team, but hear me out again, because this team genuinely has a very strong chance to get a player like Anthony Davis. Nikola Jokic and AD is a dream if you're a Nuggets fan. Despite being clearly the best player on the roster for two and a half years, Jokic still goes underrated, a little bit. He's an MVP candidate, he's not flashy, in fact he's far from it, but what he does on the court is insane. He leads his team to win, he does the little things, and he makes his team work as a whole. And the Nuggets are the second seed in the West at the time of making this video. If I'm Denver, I wouldn't really be wanting to ruin a team that has played so well over the past year. But they can offer an interesting package should the Pelicans seek to rebuild. They would have to start off with Paul Millsap's expiring $30 million contract. Why the Pelicans would want that is because he expires after next season and they would actually be able to dump the salary of Solomon Hill. Gary Harris and Will Barton are nice players, but they won't get the deal done. It will have to come down to Denver's willingness to part ways with Jamal Murray. Murray has been an elite prospect who has already shown great potential. His inclusion should have the Pelicans listening though. To sweeten the deal, the Nuggets throw in Michael Porter Jr., a former consensus first overall pick who slid down due to the injuries that he suffered, but Porter is a complete wild card at this point. So the Nuggets would trade Paul Millsap, Jamal Murray, Michael Porter Jr., and probably have to throw in Malik Beasley and a 2021st first round pick. The Pelicans would trade Anthony Davis and Solomon Hill. So do the Nuggets give too much? Well, they would have a lineup of Pony Craig, Gary Harris, Will Barton, Anthony Davis, and Jokic, with Plumlee, Lyles, Monte Morris, and Solomon Hill off the bench. The Pelicans would have a lineup of Jamal Murray, Drew Holiday, Michael Porter Jr., Julius Randle, Jaleel Okafor, with Millsap and Beasley off the bench. Honestly, in my opinion, I think it's a win-win for both teams. But if the Denver Nuggets don't want to give up that much, they may want to look to keep Michael Porter Jr. if that's possible. Number 5, the Boston Celtics. We all know what Anthony Davis' dad said. He didn't want him to go to the Celtics, but Anthony Davis himself said he'd be fine with it. So we have to assume that this is the case. Boston has its own picks, plus future selections from the Memphis Grizzlies and the Los Angeles Clippers to offer the Pelicans. It's no surprise that the Celtics would be able to acquire Anthony Davis since they've had their eyes on him for years and they do have the assets for him and the players on the roster to really pull a trade off. But the Celtics are actually unable to make a deal for Davis while keeping Kyrie Irving until July 1st. NBA rules prevent teams from acquiring more than one player via a trade who signed a Derrick Rose rule extension which allows teams to pay a player coming off his rookie contract a higher percentage of the salary cap if he meets certain requirements. The Celtics traded for Irving, meaning that they can't acquire Davis via trade until after this season, when Irving becomes a free agent and signs a new deal. Once July 1st has passed though, a deal involving Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart and a few first round picks for Anthony Davis is risky but not off the table. If Ainge could get a steal here and maybe swap Hayward for Tatum instead, that could be huge. The Celtics would have Kyrie, Jason Tatum, Anthony Davis, Al Horford. And the Pelicans would have a lineup of Drew Holiday, Jalen Brown, Gordon Hayward, Julius Randle, and Jalil Okafor with picks off the bench, including Marcus Smart. And at number six, you already know, the Los Angeles Lakers. We all know what happens here. The Lakers have LeBron James, and that is pretty much all I need to say. 
They need a win, and they need a win now. We know that they've tried to go for Davis, but they really need to just go all out. And Davis has to hope that it works. Davis wants to land with the Lakers. We all pretty much know this. I mean, we've already seen Anthony Davis sign with the agent of LeBron James in Rich Paul in September. Then there was the LeBron James comment that it would be amazing to play with Anthony Davis. And then that got followed up by Davis and his own admission that he was more concerned with his legacy than money. It sounded like a plan then and it feels like more of a plan now. And not to mention he was on LeBron James's own show. The Los Angeles Lakers' current woes with James being injured and the rest of the team also being kind of injured show a lack of depth on that team. And they obviously won't make the playoffs. But still, they have some trade assets that could interest New Orleans. Because the Lakers did not make the playoffs, they will have an okay pick. In addition to Brandon Ingram, who has stepped it up, Lonzo Ball, Kyle Kuzma, Josh Hart, Cadwell Pope, and any first-round pick. While the Lakers would obviously prefer to hang on to most of their young core, letting go of some of the combinations of Lonzo Ball, Ingram, Kuzma, and a draft pick in order to get arguably the best big man in the game is something that they would just have to live with. The fact that Anthony Davis, it seems, has the Lakers as his top option makes this the likeliest of outcomes. Just start with LeBron James and Anthony Davis and go from there if you're the Lakers. The Pelicans, on the other hand, will have an amazing young lineup of Lonzo Ball, Drew Holiday, Ingram, Kuzma, Randall with first round picks, Josh Hart and other young players off the bench. So let me know where you think Anthony Davis will be traded to. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe for more. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and let's see if we can reach 1,000 likes for the next video. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to check out some of my other videos and I am out. Peace.